There's a good chance that in browsing the internet, you've come across a post like this one. When NASA started sending astronauts into space, they quickly discovered that ballpoint pens would not work in zero gravity. To combat this problem, Congress approved a program and NASA scientists spent a decade and over $165 million developing a pen that writes in zero gravity, upside down, on almost any surface and at temperatures ranging from below freezing to over 300 degrees centigrade. The Russians used a pencil. Your taxes are due again in April. This is one of those very recognizable, ha ha, American bureaucracy and government inefficiency, aw shucks, type of posts. The only problem is, the story isn't true. Surprise, surprise. But luckily for us, the real story is actually much more interesting. And by the end of it, you, like me, can hold a piece of American astronomic history every day. In the mid-1960s, the space race was in full swing. The United States and the Soviet Union were vying for technical superiority in rocketry and space accomplishments, and of course, the nuclear weapons capability that would imply. A satellite, some probes, dogs and monkeys. Finally, a man, Yuri Gagarin, escaped the surly bonds of Earth for the first time in history. Less than a month later, the first American, Alan Shepard, followed. Both countries sped towards their goal of putting a man on the moon, all the while fighting against the raw difficulties of equipping humans for survival in an environment that was completely hostile and that had never been done before. In the 1940s, during the heat of the Second World War, there was massive research and development on both the Axis and Allied sides, mostly focused on how to kill each other more efficiently. The Manhattan Project, which yielded the atomic bomb, was a scientific breakthrough that in many ways has defined every era after it in human history. But in the end, we already had bombs. Now we just had really, really big ones. Keeping people alive at the extremes of possibility was another endeavor entirely, and many lessons were learned with the cost of brave lives. As both nations raced towards the goal of putting a man's footprints on the moon, and of course a national flag, the dangers reared their heads. On January 27th, 1967, three American astronauts, including command pilot Gus Grissom, were killed in a devastating fire during testing for the first Apollo mission. Grissom, a veteran of both Mercury and Gemini programs, was in some circles a leading candidate to make the first moon landing. The disaster was diagnosed to be an electrical spark that started a raging fire due to the pressurized, pure oxygen environment in the vessel, made worse by the fact that the escape hatch door opened in rather than out as a safety precaution, but because of the extreme high pressures inside was locked in place, preventing the astronaut's escape. The whole incident provoked a complete refocusing on safety measures to protect the crews and missions going forward. Now, let's rewind just a bit. In the early days of preparation for manned flights, both US astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts did use pencils in space due to the whole ballpoint pen and zero gravity problem. But pencils were far from the panacea that internet memesters would have you believe. See, in space travel, every tiny speck of dust or piece of loose debris presents a huge risk to both the astronauts and the equipment critical for the mission. Wood is flammable, graphite is electrically conductive, and the whole method for writing with a pencil is to scrape off millions of tiny flakes of graphite onto a piece of paper to mark it. A broken pencil, a snapped piece of lead, or even tiny particulates from normal use could present a mission critical risk that could damage equipment or even kill some of NASA's best and brightest. And these are the kinds of real problems that actual astronauts have to deal with that internet armchair quarterbacks don't. And ironically, even on cost, there was a minor scandal when NASA in 1965 purchased 34 pencils at a price of $128.89, approximately $1,000 per pencil in 2020 money. Some of these things had partial solutions. Grease pencils were used for a time, particularly on the Soviet missions, but they had their own issues in both usability and legibility. So in that same time, Paul Fisher, inventor and pen manufacturer, started independent development on the space pen. Let me just lift the next part directly off Wikipedia. The ballpoint is made from tungsten carbide and is precisely fitted in order to avoid leaks. A sliding float separates the ink from the pressurized gas. The thixotropic viscoelastic ink in the hermetically sealed and pressurized reservoir is able to write for three times longer than a standard ballpoint pen. The pen can write at altitudes up to 12,500 feet. The ink is forced out by a compressed nitrogen at a pressure of nearly 45 psi. Operating temperatures range from minus 30 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The pen can write without the help of gravity at any angle, and it has an estimated shelf life of 100 years. 
Fisher spent about a million dollars of his own money, or about eight million dollars in 2020 dollars, to develop the pin. After about 18 months of rigorous testing from NASA, the pin was approved for spaceflight, and they placed an order for the first 400 units. Sources vary, but the approximate amount that they paid for these pins was $6 a pop, a little over $50 in 2020 dollars. Other sources say there were discounts involved, and it was actually about half of that. The Soviets would also eventually adopt the space pin and place orders with Fisher. The rest, as they say, is history. The space pin debuted in use on Apollo 7 and was there on site in July of 1969 when Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins placed the first human feet on the moon. Nowadays, Fisher sells these pins to anyone who wants one in a wide variety of sizes, styles, and colors. Me personally, I clip on a matte black bullet style pin as part of my everyday carry essentials. At $25, the bullet space pin makes for an awesome and affordable gift or a worthy addition to your EDC list. I'm also eyeing the AG7 model, the original model developed for the space program. Links to both can be found in the description of this video. Let me put it to you this way. You're gonna have a pin in your car, purse, or at your desk. What you may or may not have is a genuine piece of American history with an icebreaker locked and loaded. As a side note, if there are any roaming millionaires watching this who are looking for gift ideas for me, you can help me complete my Moon Ensemble by purchasing me an Omega Speedmaster Moon Watch. Uh, contact me if you're interested. But back to the pin, even if you don't pick one up, there's a lesson to be learned here. The original story has that signature flippant sarcasm about how we overcomplicate things, too much bureaucracy, playing it too safe. There are certainly occasions where the simple and obvious answer is the right one. But there are also situations that are genuinely complex, for which there is no simple answer. Some problems seem harder than they are in reality. But some problems seem easier on the surface than they are, and they require innovation, hard work, and creativity to overcome. Let's stop doing this thing where we pretend like we know everything and like memers are able to pull a gotcha on genuine experts. Let's stop having this dismissive sarcasm and have more genuine curiosity. There's more to learn and more fun in the messy details of reality. The takeaway? Buy a space pin. And don't believe everything you see on the internet. Thank you.